here we go. Alrighty. Oh, righty. There's some good birds in the tray. Absolutely. Yeah. So we saw quite a few strong ones in the tray at the start of last round, uh, last game, I should say. Um, and yeah, certainly a couple of those tucking birds again. I think those are always good options. So, but yeah, let's see what G True Duck's got in their hand. Okay. Some some decent forest options. I think the Cooper's Hawk Ooh. and the Owl, they can both work, you know, relatively nicely. So they, I, I would certainly expect them to keep, you know, at least one of those. Not a whole lot from a wetlands perspective, mm -hmm. but yeah, with the with the tree swallow and the house finch in the tray, right. certainly they can they can look to pick one of those up. But yeah, what are your thoughts on the eagle? Because they seem to be holding on to that. You know, is that something you'd look to hold on to? Generally, not early in the game. If I picked it up, mm. you know, on a pull, I would I'd maybe try and keep it. But that's a tough bird, I think, to yep. to you know, with your opening hand to, to hold on to. Yeah, and it's interesting they've gone with the with the heron as well. I, I think that's another one, like you said, with the with the eagle. If you pick that up late in the game, you know, great. If you've got a lot of food, you can get that down for a lot of points. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it just feels interesting because they've not they've not kept a lot of food. So you know, they they if they'd chosen to just keep two birds i think they could have potentially picked up one of those birds from the tray and got that down straight away um but they are you know forcing themselves a little bit just in having to go to the bird feeder uh, but let's take a look mm -hmm. at what scared birds got i think they've got some good options we see that black chin hummingbird come up yet again um it always seems to appear either at a starting hand or in the tray early on so i think it can be a good option but yeah what what would you look to keep from this from this set of five <sighs> On this set of five, I, I'd probably be on the, the chickadee and the hummingbird. Mm. I think the hummingbird, if, you know, if you if it's going to go in the in the grassland, wheatland, um, you know, if you're getting eggs often, you can use it as a two for one almost for any other food. Um, so yep. even you know, you're you're accumulating a lot of, of cherries. But, uh, you know, you can use it for other things. Yeah, I think it's I think it's not a bad option. I think it does get a lot of flack because it's easy to compare it to the other two hummingbirds, and it's maybe not quite as good as those, but. You know, it's it's a nice bird to go in any habitat, really. You know, it can go anywhere, eat any food, and it's four points. And like you said, it's going to get you some cherries. Uh, I think the weakness is that there's not a whole lot of birds that are going to eat those cherries. But yeah, you can you can always go two for one. So, um, or even you know, they might look to pick up that tree swallow because they actually don't have a mm -hmm. wetland bird. So, um, exactly. Yeah, I think that they could very well use the cherry that they get from the hummingbird to help them get that tree swallow down and it just saves them a turn from, from having to go to the bird feeder again. Yeah, we do do have some good comments in the in the Discord chat. So uh, a couple of people have pointed out all of these end of round goals. Um, very egg heavy and lots of eggs in different nest types. So we've not seen any star nest birds appear yet. Um, but you do feel like if uh, if a star nest bird does appear, I think uh, I think these players will will look to jump on that, you know, as soon as possible, because uh, that's just going to help so much in winning these end of round goals. Um, but yeah, not uh, not seen anything come up yet, so uh, will be interesting to to keep an eye on that one at least. Mm -hmm. All right, so it seems like. G Trudat's moves are pretty straightforward here, so they have gone for the food from the owl, uh, and that will let them get the the house finch down. The only thing I do wonder is maybe they've just kept a couple of those birds as something to tuck under the house finch. So if they do play that in their grasslands, they can at least cycle through a few times, um, and yeah, hope they hope they can get something nice to go in their wetlands. Um, but yeah, I certainly I think that's. It's not a bad approach if that's what they've gone for because certainly those those two birds they've kept are going to be so expensive to to try and get down early on at least and yeah if they can if, if they can get something nice to add to that although they've gone house finch in the wetlands so um, you know maybe maybe they are going to look to keep these these two big point birds uh, I just wonder how they'll you know find themselves getting the food for that 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 could be a, that could be a bit of a struggle. It'll be interesting to see, yeah, how they play the wetlands at this mm. point to see if they try and, you know, just cycle through a lot of cards to yep. maybe get an extra um, forest bird to generate more food. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind the house finch in the wetlands. I think it can work, certainly. I mean, it, it functions kind of the same as, as how the tree swallow is working on scared bird side. 
um, you know, with that, that tuck and draw power. I think generally these powers are a bit stronger in the grasslands because you're probably activating that more. So for a start, you're going to get more points from those tucks. Um, but equally, uh, it, it just gives you options of, of gaining cards from your grasslands instead of your wetlands. So, you know, you can potentially look to look to save turns that you would have had to spend drawing cards. Instead, you can lay eggs and, and score points from that. Yeah, so it does. It does feel like Scared of Birds is probably having the slightly stronger start at the moment. Um, they do have very similar looking boards, in the sense that they both got that tuck and draw power in their wetlands, um, and they've both got a, a potential point giving bird in their forest. Um, but certainly, I think Scared of Birds has got some nice draws here. I think the Yellow Throat is a really strong option, um, and obviously the the Cowbird that they've got, and and that Hummingbird that can go anywhere. Um, they've they've certainly got some good options, and also they've got that double cavity nest down already. So, you know, if they can make sure that they keep eggs on both those birds, um, that's going to help them win this this first end of round. So, yeah, that uh, certainly looks like a, a strong position at the moment for scared of birds. Yeah, we've got some comments about the uh, about using the swift the moment um, obviously it has got that star nest that we touched on earlier so uh, potentially could be a really strong uh, option for these end of round goals uh, I typically don't play these these migratory birds but I have seen them work quite well in certain circumstances so you know is that something that you that you play quite often in your games or you know what what's your experience using these yeah usually they're they're better for ones where it's like eggs in the wetland and then eggs in the mm. forest or something like that uh but anytime like we had said earlier uh you can get a star nest in a game like this with where it's all different bowl types yeah uh, nest types um and it's not it's not uh expensive to get down and then you can use it to your advantage as you're moving through the game to get extra food extra eggs or extra cards yep. as you move it around yeah i but think i don't mind that at all yeah i think if you're able to plan your turns ahead and be able to yeah, really maximize the usage of that of that migration power and be able to, like you said, move it across habitats, you know, you're getting extra cards or food or whatever it is. Um, I think, you know, that, that is always a good option to have. And yeah, that star nest, um, it certainly is, is going to help, you know, with, with some of those end of round goals. So mm -hmm. looks like they're going for the Kingfisher, which again is another star nest. So yeah, I think if, you know, if they can get a couple of these canvas back as well as a good option. Um, that really sets them up nicely. As we said, you know, these star nests are going to be so important um, for helping them win these end of round goals. Absolutely. Yep, so we have a brand that's come up in the tray. Um, one of those birds where people either love it or hate it. Uh, I don't mind it, I think it can work nicely. It's maybe a little bit too late at this point. Um, but yeah, some some love for the brand in the chat, um, and and there's always going to be some hatred as well from it. So um, I tend to I tend to like it early in the game yeah. um, for multiple reasons. You know, you can get good birds with it, or you can just generate some cards that you can use for tuck. Yeah, and... yeah. I think in that first round, it can be a really good option where actually being able to draw cards is so difficult. So being able to get three in a single turn from one play is is such a strong move. Uh, but yeah, I think both players actually have quite nice options in their wetlands at the moment. Um, certainly, if Scared of Birds can get either this canvas back with the Star Nest or uh, or potentially the the Yellow Throat as well, you know, I think that I think that gives them some some good options uh, in terms of card draw, meaning they they probably don't need the brand at this point. I think um, Scared of Birds is probably just so happy every time she's drawn cards, there hasn't been a, a goal or a kill deal <laughs> that's replaced it in the tray. She's probably just uh, yeah. You know, thanking her lucky stars. For exactly. That. Yeah, we did see that quite a lot in that game one, where it seemed like every time Scared of Birds was drawing cards, uh, you know, that they were being replaced by even stronger ones. Um, mm -hmm. Particularly in the, those first couple of rounds, it happened multiple times. So, yeah, it's one of those where you lay eggs, or you got you gain cards, and you're just thinking, please don't don't get anything good coming up in its place. Um, but they, yeah, they seem to have done, uh, they seem to have done okay so far, and. Yeah, they managed to get that kingfisher down, which is nice. Um, and hummingbird in the in the forest is an interesting one. I don't mind that. 
Um, you know, like I said before, it is a nice bird that kind of fills out any habitat. And actually being able to get three food now, as well as the cash on the chickadee, it's just going to help them get down some of those birds, like the canvasback and potentially uh, the cowbird as well. You know, once you see your opponent play something like the crow in their grasslands, you can sort of expect, okay, I'm going to get quite a few eggs um, if I can get one of these pink egg powers down. So, yeah, certainly I think they can they can look to get that that cowbird down, and it's just going to help get them get them lots of eggs uh, as the game goes on. And and the eggs will go into now star nest birds, which will help with every single yep. underground from here on out. Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, they will, they maybe would have struggled a little bit without those, just because you know you look at the hummingbird, it's only got two spaces, so that can fill up pretty quickly if you're not careful. But yeah, that kingfisher with four star nest spots, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they look to play the canvas back as well at some point mm-hmm. soon. So yeah, like you say, it's uh, it, it it gives more capacity just at a basic level, but it's going to help them. They probably won't even need to think about laying eggs to try and win these end of round goals uh, if they can get two star nests down. So it just puts them in a strong position. <laughs> okay, so it does look like just based on what gtrude has been doing, uh, I think they've been using their crow to get some rodents here. So they are potentially looking at getting that eagle down. Maybe they might go for the double bird, um, but I think certainly that eagle, if you, if they can get it down, that's obviously a lot of points. Uh, it's going to help, certainly with that next end of round goal on the platform nest. Um, and yeah, it is a strong brown power, you know, it's quite a high chance of, of getting the success. So yeah, it feels, it feels quite even at this point, um, just in terms of, you know, points on the board and potential of the, of the cards in their hand. Uh, I do wonder if it's going to be, you know, again one of those games where just based on the the star nest powers and being able to get those end of round goals, uh, that could uh, potentially make the difference here for scatter birds. Oh boy! Oh, here oh, we go! Boy. Here we go! Another one, <laughs> and a mockingbird mocking as well. So just as I say, it's looking even. I have to put my <laughs> foot firmly into my mouth as uh, as G two that draws a raven. So. Yeah, scared of birds. They got through two rounds this time, so they did a little bit better. They got through two rounds without having to see an OP bird appear. Um, right. But yeah, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna see that come down now, and just think, oh come on, uh, you know what <laughs> what do I have to do to get a little bit of luck here? Right. <laughs> um, oh well, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so another one's come up. We've got the kill deer now, um, which I think certainly is the signal to. <laughs> Yeah, that's the oh, right yeah, move. That's, uh, With the wax wing, that's a really she, nice option. Yep, and she has a viticulturist also, so that'll help. Yes. Now she'll be on the, on the min for that. Absolutely, and, uh, that's a great point. Yeah, I think uh, they can certainly look to, to try and pivot, as our good friend Terry would say, into their grasslands, get some of these birds down. Um, and yeah, you know, their wetlands was okay, but it wasn't super strong. Um, so certainly if they can get that killdeer down, you know, as soon as possible, and really maximize the usage from it and yeah I think that wax wing is a is a really nice option to go along with that as well. Now here's a question for you Flan. Um it looks like true uh, true that's looking to do the the double play mm. in the wetlands with the the heron and the yep. golden eagle. Um because they're going to be getting so many eggs the last, you know, um 10 turns here. Would you wait for another water bird and play the eagle in in the in the grassland? try and get more tucks on it or, mm. or more kills yeah that's a tricky one um, how would you play that I think I think I'd I think I'd go for the double play here with the with the heron and the eagle uh, I think potentially they'll look to get that mockingbird down in their grasslands um, I think that's probably a better option than the eagle obviously you can copy the the sparrow in that case and so you're getting that guaranteed point just from the egg um, but yeah I I just looking at the nests, maybe they might need it for this end of round goal. Uh, but I think they do have a couple of platform nests already. So, yeah, I think I'd be looking to get the get the heron and the eagle down. Uh, it just gives them that option at least to be able to draw mm-hmm. extra cards. Um, you know, obviously as strong as that grassland is, they don't have great card draw at the moment. So I think if they can just extend that wetlands out a little bit, as it looks like they're doing here. Um, it just helps them because you know they're probably going to want to draw cards at least one more time 
you know, maybe even twice if they don't get anything good. Um, and they're, they're yeah, going to have to just hope they can get some of these big point birds because uh, getting the food from that grassland uh, is, is not really going to be a problem for them. Now comes the kill deer. And out it comes, yep. So I don't think G-Trude has much to complain about seeing that, <laughs> considering the raven they've got this game um, <laughs> and all the ridiculous right. birds they had last game as well. So... Um, yeah, be interesting to see. I feel like in terms of points, just based on the last few turns, you know, G-Trude managed to get that double play down. Uh, obviously, the Raven itself is five points, which is nice. So I think they've managed to score quite a lot of points in the last few turns. Uh, whereas, you know, looking at Scared of Birds, they've had to play. The Waxwing is only three points. The Killdeer is only a point. I think they might have had to spend a couple of turns gaining food to get those down. Um, but yeah, I think they can really use that kill deer to its potential now and just try and you know get some birds and if they do get lucky if they get some nice draws uh from the deck certainly having the waxwing there to get tucks and more food uh, i think that that is going to put them in a strong position so it could well come down to this this last round and just you know what what scared of birds is uh is able to draw here mm -hmm. potentially yeah if she can get a bonus card down or two yeah and obviously not forgetting uh you know that pink power with the cowbird they'll they'll certainly expect lots of eggs mockingbird into the weapon yeah that is an interesting play uh i can only think that they are not happy with their cards and just or their ability to draw cards um and want to want to maximize the chances of of drawing something good you know, I probably would have expected that Mockingbird to go in the wetland, or in the grassland, sorry, rather than the wetlands, because you are going to lay eggs a few times. You're going to get extra points from that. Um, that is certainly an interesting play, uh, and, and and not one I would have expected. But you know, maybe it pays off. Maybe they do manage to use that power to, I would assume, copy the Finch and just get more tucks and be able to cycle through more cards. Because I think at this point, you know, they're looking for those kind of birds they had in the last game, like the Puffin or the Spotted Owl. You know these really big point birds that are going to get bonus cards or score a lot of points. That's really what they're going to need to be to be looking for at this point. Yeah, not the kind of birds you want to see. You don't want to be drawing two warm point birds. Um, yeah, we've got some comments in the chat as well. I was I was thinking about the long spare in the tray. Uh, it just looks like you know such a strong option. Obviously, getting that bonus card. Um, they're going to get a lot of cherries, which obviously it doesn't eat, but you know, like you pointed out before with the hummingbird, you can use those as two for one. So um, right. certainly, you know, gambling on that bonus card, I think, would uh, would would probably be worth it at this point because they haven't really got a whole lot of other birds that that you look to play at this point. With the food in the inventory, she could play the. I think it was a, the skimmer or the anhinga. I guess it was the anhinga. Yep. So she she could put that out. That's you know, it's a five point. Bird. Yeah, that's it's it's not bad. Um, I think certainly, you know, they'll probably try and leave it to the last possible second. They have got a lot of egg space, which does mean they they can sort of, you know, wait wait as long as possible before before committing one way or the other. They have gone for the swift, which I think is an interesting pick. You know, that's one that works mm -hmm. so nicely with the kill deer. Um, it does maybe feel a little bit late, and yeah, just seeing what's popped up in the tray in place of that swift. Uh, I think I would have rather had the Warbler, and certainly, yeah, G Trudat will be will be feeling very happy, um, uh, and the Ooh, Turkey as well. Turkey. So, yeah, I think that's probably about as perfect of a of a draw that they could have asked for. G Trudat, and certainly they can lay eggs a couple of times, easily get the food to play those two big point birds, um, and I think that's going to help out with their Ulogis bonus card as well. Ooh. So. Yeah, looks like uh, looks like a strong last round here for G True Dat. Yeah, so we've got the egret come up in the tray. So that's another one of those double birds. I think we saw the great blue heron last game. Uh, did wonder if maybe scared of birds might have looked to go for that. They probably just about would have had enough food to play that alongside the ahinga in the in the wetlands for the double bird. Uh, but it looks like they've gone swift. So at this point, probably just go through that grasslands, um, tuck a lot of birds. Um, I'm kind of interested why G True Duck's gone for cards again here. Um, I feel like they didn't really need more cards. It looked like they had some some strong options already. Yeah, they already yeah. had the both the turkey 
and the Warbler, uh, I think they, they probably could have got away with just laying eggs a couple of times and playing those, because now, you know, you look at their grasslands, they've only got three turns left. Um, so if they lay eggs once, that's going to get them three food, so they can play one of those birds, but then they're not going to have enough food to play the other one. So really, they're only going to lay eggs twice and play one bird. Um, certainly, I think they they could have got more points if they'd looked to get those two big point birds down. Uh, and yeah, like I said before, you know that Ula just bonus card. They they need the nine, or they need, well they need to get you know as many birds down as possible and 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 get the eggs in there. I think they might just about have enough already. Um, but you know they've they've not really already got eggs on all of them. So by drawing cards that one extra time. Uh, I think it's just it's just limiting the number of turns they're giving themselves to lay eggs on the birds they need, but also also get those big point birds down. Spirit birds just pulled the woodcock, which is the nicest yep. big point bird for end of game. Yeah, and it might be even worth playing that. I think you know if you look at their grasslands, they're going to get four eggs at base, plus another two tuck cards, and then another egg from the swift. So that's seven points. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. if they can play that woodcock, they've certainly got enough food for it. Even after the egg cost, that's going to get them eight. So um, you know, they could they could absolutely look to get that down. That's a that's a strong bird. And yeah, another one of those birds that I think G Trudat would have would have potentially looked to pick up um, alongside the other ones they've already got in their hand. Yeah. So just looking at the food um, that G Trudat's drawn, they have gone three worms. So to me, that kind of looks like they're going to go for um, this warbler they've got in their hand, and then potentially, you know, you discard that, you discard that other worm when you're laying eggs. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, that's yeah, that's seven points, and they did have a couple of eight-point birds in their hand that they could look to play instead. Um, maybe they have an eye on this on this end of round goal. Uh, you know, just trying to look. I think they've got three bowl nests, and that is going to help them tie at least what scared of birds has managed on their board so that you know that that probably made sense as a play but i still feel like those two eight point birds um that are sitting in their hand at the moment uh, it feels a bit of a shame that that they've not managed to get those those down on the board because you know it's a lot of points to be leaving in your hand here is the the first bird in the hand was that was a prothonotary warbler is that yep. that's a uh, cavity that's right? a cavity yeah yeah so, yep. so yeah. i think they they were potentially being a little bit blinded here by the end of round goal you know they have obviously gained mm -hmm. a few points by managing to tying that but they did have to spend another turn drawing cards and that turn could have been spent you know playing one of these eight point birds and scoring a lot more points um mm -hmm. so it does it does feel a little bit of a shame um that those have been left but yeah, I think this is a tough one to call. I feel like when the Raven came I was out, just ask you. yeah, when the Raven came what out, I thought, oh, G Trudat's kind of got this in the bag. Um, but maybe some missed options here at the end. And actually, you know, with the Kill Deer and even with the Swift as late as it was, and obviously that Cowbird getting lots of free eggs, um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be massively surprised if if Scared of Birds can can get close at least here. But yeah, I'm I'm not feeling confident enough to call which way this game is going to go. So. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see as uh, as the scores count up here. I think Scared of Birds got a lot of eggs um, and and more tuck cards, so that could potentially be what brings it back for them here. Yeah, she had more way, uh, And there we go, super close. See that? Nick it. Super, yeah, close. super close, three points in it. So, yeah, good game. More more overpowered birds coming out. Um, but yeah, G True that just in the end nicks it by by three points. And uh, that hooded warbler with the uh, with yep. tying the bonus in the last round. And, yep, uh, those three points that came from that that last end of round goal. So, yep, good good couple of games. And G Trudat winning two to zero will go through uh, into the next round. So, well played. And yeah, congratulations to G Trudat.